nucleophilic addition of carbon nucleophiles to aldehydes and ketones, what we're looking at in this lesson. And a little bit of review. We saw the nucleophilic addition of Grignard reagents back in the alcohols chapter. It was one way we learned to synthesize an alcohol. And uh, we also learned the nucleophilic addition of acetylide ions. We learned that we can add acetylide ions to alkyl halides, ketones or aldehydes, or epoxides back in the alkyne chapter as well. So there's gonna be a little bit of review, but we'll see one new one. We're gonna form cyanohydrins with the addition of cyanide, another carbon nucleophile. And then in the next lesson, we'll cover one very unique carbon nucleophile in what's called the Wittig reaction, spelled with a W. But the Wittig reaction, again, that'll be in the next lesson. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you wanna be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. Okay, so starting with the review part of this, and we'll start with adding an acetylide ion here. And so uh, back in the alkyne chapter, we usually kind of looked at the acetylide as kind of our major organic reactant, and then what we were adding it to is kind of the reagent. And uh, in this context, now we're probably going to look at the ketone or aldehyde as kind of like the reagent we're starting with, and then we're adding the acetylide to it. But, you know, uh, it looks different, but it's exactly the same thing. So, but in this case, uh, we're going to add that acetylide ion. The sodium here is just a spectator. Sometimes you'll see it not even drawn in, but it's typically there. Had to form the acetylide usually by deprotonating a terminal alkyne with sodium amide. So that's where the sodium ion comes from. Uh, but in this case, this lovely carbon nucleophile, it's just going to do nucleophilic attack, push the electrons up to the oxygen. And we'll once again form an alkoxide here. Now, one thing to note, so students love making these errors, and I pointed this out back in the day, so, but don't mess this up. You're attaching this carbon to this carbon, but don't turn it into it. Don't do this. Don't go and do that. So one, you got some major octet rule violation stuff going on, but instead of attaching this carbon to that carbon, you made them one end the same carbon, if you drew that out, or I guess I did in this case. So what you want to do, and oftentimes it's helpful if the carbon-carbon bond you're forming is the last thing you draw. So I want to attach this carbon to this carbon, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach them right here. And so I made that carbon-carbon bond the last one I drew. So sometimes forming that carbon-carbon bond can make you a magician and make a carbon disappear. All right, so we've got that alkoxide there, and then we typically add water or some really dilute acid. So you, you will see some people write H3O+, plus, but it's, it's a fairly dilute H3O+, plus so that it doesn't actually react with the alkyne itself. So, but either way, we'll protonate this guy. So in this case, I guess I could draw the water molecule in. Show that complete mechanism. And voila, we're done. Cool, so total review, that's the acetylide ion. And also gonna be review, here's the addition of a Grignard here. And so in this case, uh, you know, back in the day, we learned that if we add a Grignard to formaldehyde, we'll get a primary alcohol. If we add it to a regular aldehyde, we get a secondary alcohol. And when we add it to a ketone here, we'll get a tertiary alcohol. All right, so in this case, you learned that for a Grignard reagent, you wanna treat that as if it's ionic, at least in your head. It's not 100% ionic only like 52% ionic, but you want to treat it as being ionic here so that you can envision that carb anion nucleophile that this is the equivalent of. So again, just like we saw in the last lesson that the hydride reagents were the equivalent of having a hydride ion, a Grignard reagent is the equivalent of having a carb anion. And so in this case, so if we were to draw this kind of like, so carb anion is going to attack, do nucleophilic attack, push the electrons up to the oxygen. And some, some professors in textbooks actually make a point of drawing it like this on a regular basis because it's much easier for students to see. But technically, if you're actually going to draw the mechanism a little more correct here, you'd actually use this bond right here, just like we used like the uh, boron hydrogen bond or aluminum hydrogen bond at the last lesson. So when this... Uh, these electrons are being commandeered by this carbon, which is then using them to attack this carbonyl is essentially what's happening. All right. And so in this case, we once again are forming an alkoxide. So, and maybe I'll do this the same uh, as I did over here as well. Draw the carbon-carbon bond we formed last. And so here's the two carbons I'm adding and the carbon-carbon bond we formed is right there. Cool, and then we're gonna do our acid workup step like we normally do with the Grignard with our H3O plus. Why don't we draw one of those in? And 
and that's finally going to get us our alcohol product. Cool. And like I said, we started with an, a ketone here, and with a ketone, you end up with a tertiary alcohol. With an aldehyde, you would have ended up with a secondary alcohol, and with formaldehyde, you would have just ended up with a primary alcohol instead. But again, both of these are review. Let's take a look at that cyanohydrin formation. All right, with cyanohydrin formation, so most common reagent you're going to see is HCN, but technically, sometimes you'll see just people mix in combinations of like, let's actually do it down here, sodium, cyanide, and then pick a strong acid. So like H2SO4 or something like that. So see those combinations done as well. So just an FYI, but I'm just going to write HCN out and I'm actually going to draw a molecule of HCN out. So, and the way this works, we're actually going to protonate our ketone in this case. So, and then we'll have our cyanide ion, and that cyanide ion is just going to come back and do nucleophilic attack, push those pi electrons up. So, and get us this guy. And this guy is your cyanohydrin. When the same carbons bonded both to the cyano group and a hydroxyl group, that's what we term cyanohydrin. Cool, and these are uh, not gonna be the most synthetically useful things now. So, but in the future, we'll learn that we can turn these uh, cyano groups, they're called nitriles as a functional group, into carboxylic acids. And so these may have some utility later on in forming carboxylic acids. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Again, best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guides that go with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on aldehydes and ketones, check out my premium course at chadsprep.com.